Good evening, everyone. How are we all doing today? All right, we're going to get started in just a moment. All right then. Okay, so let's get started for today. Welcome to Tennessee's live sharing sessions. Um, in our live sharing sessions, we aim to teach you grammar bites, tips, tricks, techniques that, that, that can help you excel in your English paper. Um, so in our session for today, we're going to be looking at something called patterns and parts of speech. Okay, parts of speech is a very useful knowledge to have when attempting closed passage or comprehension closed passages um, in your paper too. Okay, so what are parts of speech? Let's review that first. Okay, so what is a noun? What is a noun? This is very, very basic. You should know what a noun is. Okay, well done. A noun is the name of a person, place, thing, or idea. Well done. So now that we have that in place, you've got examples like Eliza. That's a person, a house is a place, uh, the botanical gardens, very nice, it's another place. Um, we also have being happy, all right, or rather the idea of happiness because it's an idea, okay? These are uh, examples of nouns. Next, we've got pronouns. Pronouns are typically used in place of a noun. Okay, these comprise of examples such as she, we, they, it, me, etc. Okay, so usually you will place a noun with a pronoun. Moving on, you have a verb. All right, hey Akhil, hi Aprameya, welcome to session. Today we're looking at parts of speech and how this can help you in attempting comprehension closed passages. Hi Roshan, hi Raylin. All right, so once again, welcome to Tenepi Live Sharing. I am Teacher Chashna, and we're going through parts of speech. Okay, we're going through parts of speech, how you can use this to help you excel in your comprehension closed passages. Hey, Muching. Okay, so like I was saying, a noun is the name of a person, place, thing, or idea. All right, and these are examples of nouns. Then you have pronouns. Pronouns are used in place of a noun. Examples of pronouns are she, we, they, it, me, etc. A verb. Can, you, can anyone tell me in the chat box, what is a verb? It expresses what exactly? What is a verb? Anybody want to tell me? Yes, well done, Akhil and Roshan. A verb expresses action or being. For example, you can jump or you can sing. This is a way you can be, right? Moving on, an adverb. An adverb is a word that describes a verb, an adjective or another adverb. Also, you use adverbs for describing how, where or when something is done. For instance, okay, for instance, these are some adverbs. You've got the word gently, well, very, then. Another tip is adverbs are usually words that are ending in L-Y. Adjectives, what are adjectives? Adjectives modify or describe a, tell me in the chat box. Very good, it describes a noun or, if you didn't know this, I'm gonna tell it to you now, a pronoun. Okay, so adjectives modify or describe a noun or pronoun. Can you give me some adjectives in the chat box, please? Well done. Yes, you've got big, good, blue, old, good, beautiful, colorful, smart, sad, cute, very nice. These are great adjectives. Next, okay, we have preposition. Okay, we're looking at prepositions. These are placed before a noun or pronoun to form a phrase. It helps us show the relationship between nouns. 
Can you give me some examples of prepositions, please? Good. I like what's coming in the chat box. So we've got by, with, until, about, on, in. Well done. Um, I'm zooming through the parts of speech because I really want to teach you about patterns and parts of speech. This is what is going to help you when you attempt your close passages. So what are conjunctions? What are conjunctions? Blank words, phrases, or statements. So what do conjunctions do to words, phrases, or statements? They, what do they do? Good, Aprameya. Connects words, phrases, or statements. And some examples of conjunctions are, give me, good, Elise, can you give me some examples of conjunctions, please? Good, because, what else? As, and, so, well done. And, but, or, while, because, so, very good. Lastly, interjection, a word used to express emotion. A lot of people forget that this is also a part, a, a part of speech. There are eight parts of speech. Never forget this. Can you give me an example of expressing emotion as an interjection? No problem, Roshan. An interjection looks a little bit like, oh no, Apramaya, that's a phrase, or rather that's, um, or rather that's a simile. An interjection is, <gasps> Oh, wow. Okay, these are interjections. They're usually sound remarks. Yeah, wow is one or oops. Okay, so now that we've done a very, very quick revision of what our parts of speech are, let's look at common patterns. Aprame, that's a good one. Oh no, that's an interjection. Okay, let's look at common patterns that you can find in everyday English sentences. This is one of the most basic sentence patterns. Amy plays netball. The girls are playing catch. What you need to do over here is identify what are these words? Amy is a person, which makes her a noun. Play, can you tell me the part of speech for play? What is the part of speech for play? Good, it's a verb. What about netball? What is the part of speech of netball? It's a game. It's a ball game. Very good. It's a noun. Would you like to give me a try in the chat box? Give me another sentence that you can form with noun, verb, noun. Even the second sentence that you see over here, right? The girls are playing catch. Yes, I have connecting words. However, the main parts of speech of this sentence are girls, noun, playing. Verb, catch, noun. Very nice, Aprameya. I like cooking. Oops. Well, Aprameya, do you notice something? Cooking is not the noun. Cooking here is a verb. So let's try another one. Very nice, Elise. The boys are playing hide and seek. Good. Let's move to the next one. Noun, linking verb, and nouns. So this time I've given you the pattern. Let's take a look at the sentence. Joshua is a doctor. So this is a pattern to use linking verbs to connect two nouns together. All right, it's a little bit different from this one, from number one, because you have a is a. Is a, or rather just is, is a verb. Okay, and you're connecting Joshua to being a doctor. Next. Edmund has been a lawyer. Similarly, has been is a linking verb. Edmund and lawyer are nouns. Would you now like to give me another sentence? Good, Mary is a pilot. Another one I have is Sam is a vet. Very good. Let's move on. Now linking verb adjective. This pattern uses linking verbs to link a noun to its description. Now I'm gonna give you a quick tip here, okay? Adjectives and nouns usually always come together in two different ways. This is the first way, okay? Where it's noun, linking verb, and adjective. So let's look at the sentence, okay? My computer is laggy. Mm -mm. Her father seems angry. So is, seems, these are the linking verbs, laggy, 
angry, these are your adjectives. Can you give me another sentence example of a noun, linking verb, and adjective? My sister is naughty, says Roshan. That's a good one. Okay, so we've got my sister is naughty. Any others? Any others? Yeah, good. Algebra was easy. The boys are happy. Uh, actually, over here, happy is a noun. Okay? Because they're, 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 it's a certain way they're being. My brother is cute. Okay. So this is one way you can connect a noun and an adjective. Another way you can connect it, we're going to look at it a little later, okay? Let's look at this one. The adverb is added on to describe how the action or the verb is done. Rajesh drives quickly. Eva sings beautifully. Can you tell me the pattern here? In the chat box, tell me what the pattern is for these sentences. Good. Noun followed by drives and sings. What are these? Good. Okay. Noun, verb. Very nice, Roshan. Adverb. That is the pattern. Okay. And I'm going to give you an exam sentence example over here. He does his homework cautiously. Okay. So these are common patterns in the pa common patterns and parts of speech in the English language. We've got two more. Okay. Before I give you a quick test. Next one is verb and preposition. The preposition following the verb can change the meaning of the sentence. She complained about the noise. All right, she complained about the noise. Over here, complained is the verb and the preposition is about. Let's look at the next one. They are searching for their missing dog. They are searching for their missing dog. Searching is the verb and the preposition is for. Because we added in the preposition, it changes the meaning of the sentence. To explain, if she complained, full stop. But if you say she complained about the noise, you're being specific with the information. They are searching, full stop. They are searching for their missing dog. You've added in this extra piece of information and that's how it changes the sentence. Another example is of a verb followed by a preposition is Craig arrived at the airport two hours early. Okay, similarly arrived at, all right, it's a verb come preposition. And now everybody, this is the last very common pattern, or pattern, pattern in parts of speech. Let's take a look at this, all right. In most sentence patterns, the adjective precedes or comes before the noun or pronoun. Red shirt, small flower. So what's the pattern over here, everyone? What is the pattern over here? Well done, you picked up on that very fast. Adjective plus noun. So adjectives and noun can come in two different sentence structures. This is the second one. So you've got red shirt, small flower, naughty boy, shiny diamond, uh, pink rose, pink bag, very nice, okay? So a quick test for you. Imagine in your close passage, you have a word that's missing, okay? Knowing your parts of speech, identifying them, is a, it's an actually a technique for you to be able to identify what could be in the blank. Imagine over here, she wished upon a shooting star. If wished was your blank, you would be able to determine that it would be pronoun, upon a shooting star, this is a noun, so this will be pronoun, verb, noun. Okay, that's how you use it. So I've done one of them for you. How about now you do the others? It's a quick test. We'll see what you got. Whenever you're ready, let me know what the first one is. Robots can make mistakes. Yes, robots is a noun, well done. Good, can make is a linking verb. So what is mistakes over here? It's a 
It's a, what is mistakes? You make a mistake. It is a, well done, it's a noun. Got the first one. What's the next one? Can you tell me the pattern and part of speech for the next one? What part of speech is the word unlike? We know Tom and Jerry are nouns, so that's fairly easy. Good. Preposition plus noun followed by noun, verb, noun. Okay. Yes, some of you might say this is a linking verb. I will also accept that. We've got two more before we're wrapping up for today. Who wants to try? Samantha chose the cutest kitten. Very good. Cutest is an adjective. Good job, Bethany. What about chose? It's an action which makes that what part of speech? Yes, so very simply put, it's a noun verb. Now an article is usually the or a. Uh, these are called articles, just for your information. Okay, and cutest is an adjective and the kitten is a noun. We've got the last one. The last one. Gray retreated calmly from the bear. Calmly is an adjective. Are you sure? Remember words that end in L-Y are a special kind of word. They are. Good job, Roshan, you got that spot on. So it's a noun, verb, adverb, preposition, the word from, article, and then noun. So use these patterns. The more you practice identifying parts of speech in a close passage or in any sentence, you'll learn that there are fixed patterns. Of course, there are more types of patterns, but the ones we covered today are the most common ones. Okay, I'm going to scroll right back up if you want to take it down for yourself. The first type we have is noun, verb, noun. The next one we have is noun, linking verb, noun. The third is noun, linking verb, adjective. And remember, the noun and adjective pairing comes in two types. The fourth one is noun, verb, adverb. Next, we have verb and preposition. And lastly, we have adjective and noun. That's a really good question, Rosha. And do they come out often? Yes, they do. These are the most common uh, patterns in parts of speech in the English language. So when you are attempting your comprehension close and you don't know what the blank is, identify the parts of speech of the keywords before and after the blank. And then think what could come in between. If it's a noun and a noun, chances are the word in between is a verb, all right? And that's what we have, that's all we have today for Tenepi's live sharing session. Does anybody have any questions for me? You can drop them in the chat box now. Practice, 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 and that's how you're gonna get it, okay? If not, thank you so much for joining me for today's Lesson Bites. Okay, if you would like to get more of our learning experiences, just get in touch and I dropped you how to contact us in the chat box. Bye everyone, thank you for joining me today.